Jedi were, of course, for a thousand generations, the guardians of peace and justice in the galaxy, to quote Obi-Wan Kenobi. And there were, there were a lot of powerful Jedi out there, including the, the old Jedi from the Old Republic and the new Jedi from the New Republic. And so today I'll be counting down the top 10 canon most powerful Jedi. So the, this is my opinion on the top 10 Jedi that were the most powerful in canon sources. And this is only going to be from the films, so episodes 1 through 9, however only episodes 1 through 7, because that's all we have right now, in the Star Wars Clone Wars series, in the Star Wars Rebel series. So, yeah. So, kicking off this list at number 10 is Ahsoka Tano, the Jedi Padawan of Anakin Skywalker. So, this is definitely one of the main characters in the Star Wars Clone Wars series, which takes place between episodes 2 and 3. And if you don't want to see um, any spoilers for the Clone Wars, then definitely don't watch this video. Um, but Ahsoka Tano does eventually leave the Jedi Order and become somewhat of a gray Jedi. She doesn't use the dark side, she still uses the light side, but in Star Wars Rebels, when she returns as a much older and wiser character, she definitely is very much of a gray Jedi. She has new um, white lightsabers, which signify that she's not affiliated with the Sith or the Jedi. But she's still a very, you know, a very wise, um, very wise character and gives advice to the Jedi in Star Wars Rebels. But when she de when she de debuted in Star Wars: The Clone Wars, you know, definitely a very, a very prominent character um, with a lot of, you know, a lot of character, a lot of spirit, and a very interesting character as well, and I think she definitely was one of the most powerful Jedi out there. She was an apprentice to a very powerful Jedi, Anakin Skywalker, who will also appear on this list, which is, you know, no surprise there. Um, and she was able to hold her own with her master, so it's definitely very cool, which earned her a spot on this list. At number 9 is Ezra Bridger, the star of the Star Wars Rebels animated series. So this is, of course, you know, another character from the animated series. Ahsoka Tano is kind of his mentor. She's not his master, that is Kanan Jarrus. Yeah, um, his master is Kanan Jarrus. And um, Ezra Bridger appears in Rebels, which takes place after Order 66. And Kanan Jarrus, his master, was a Padawan. His master died to save him. And a few years later, he takes on a Padawan of his own, and Ezra Bridger is very powerful in the Force, and apparently, according to the new trailers we're seeing for the season finale of um, Star Wars Rebels Season 2, I don't know when this video is going to be uploaded, in. yeah, I don't know when this video is going to be uploaded, so I don't know, by the time this is uploaded, maybe the, the season finale would have already aired, um, but from when I'm recording this, the season finale has not aired, and it seems like Ezra might turn to the dark side, that's, you know, that's definitely kind of a looming factor. He definitely is very tempted by the dark side, but either way, he is very powerful, whether he ends up fighting for the dark or the light, he's definitely a very powerful Jedi, and it's been said that his um, abilities in the Force are eventually going to become, you know, even stronger and even better than his masters, Kanan Jarrus, which definitely is saying something, because even though Kanan does not appear on this list, he is still very powerful. At number 8 is a very interesting choice, in my opinion, and this is Ben Solo, who is, of course, the main antagonist of the Star Wars sequel trilogy, which is The Force Awakens in Episode 8 and 9, um, so yeah, Episode 7 through 9, and we have not seen any of Ben Solo as a Jedi, however, however we do know that he was um, Luke's Padawan, and eventually, just like his grandfather, he turned on the Jedi Order, um, destroying all that Luke had um, worked for all that he had built, um, and he, he betrayed his uncle, um, basically betrayed his whole family, joined Snoke in the First Order, so really we only see him as a, you know, a warrior of the dark side, we only see him as a Knight of Ren in The Force Awakens, and I would have put this, you know, I would have put Ben Solo higher, um, if we might have seen, you know, if we might have seen more of him as a Jedi, maybe we'll get some comic books or some novels or maybe even hopefully some TV shows like animated series about Luke's Jedi Academy and we'll be able to see more of Ben Solo when he was a Padawan, just like how the prequels showed us Anakin, Darth Vader when he was a Jedi. So something very similar to this, but I'm guessing that since he is related to the Skywalkers, he's not a Skywalker, but he is a Solo. 
He's related to the Skywalkers. His mother was Leia Organa. Um, he definitely is very powerful in the Force, and he definitely does deserve a spot on this list. And if his character develops even more in the next few episodes, he might even be higher on this list. At number 7 is Ki Adi Mundi, and this is a very underrated character in the Star Wars franchise, a very underrated Jedi, but I believe him to be a very powerful Jedi because if you notice in the prequels, he actually seems to be one of the more powerful and one of the more higher ranking Jedi on the council. He's obviously not, you know, he's obviously not as high up on the council as Windu or Yoda, but he seems to be right beneath Windu and Yoda. Yoda is obviously the grandmaster of the council, and Windu is the master of the council, and I think um, Ki Adi Mundi is kind of in that third spot. So if, for instance, Windu was killed, I think probably, you know, the council does elect its own members, but he would probably be elected the master of the um, of the council, something like that. So he's a very powerful and very high-ranking Jedi, and I really think he's very underrated. Now, since he is kind of underrated, we don't have that much information about him, so there's not much to say, but I do think he's a very powerful Jedi because he is very high up on the Jedi Council. For number 6 is another very interesting choice, and this is Master Dooku. And this is, of course, Count Dooku, or Darth Tyrannus, before he fell to the dark side and before he became a Sith. Now, I'm a huge fan of um, Count Dooku, or Darth Tyrannus. He's my favorite Sith, and I think he's a very underrated character in the Star Wars universe. A great backstory, he trained Qui-Gon Jinn, and what ultimately led him to falling to the dark side was Qui-Gon's death in Episode 1. But we don't really get to see much of Dooku as a Jedi. We know he was a Jedi. He was a very highly respected Jedi. I'm guessing he was probably very high up on the council, right up there with Yoda, Windu, and Kia D. Mundi. Um, so he's definitely a very powerful Jedi when he was a Jedi, and we didn't get to see much of him. We do know that he was Yoda's last official Padawan. Um, so definitely a very interesting character, one of my favorites that, again, we didn't get to see much of um, as a Jedi, very similar to Ben Solo. But I do think he was one of the more powerful Jedi because I think the only Jedi that was able to defeat um, Dooku was Anakin Skywalker. And speaking of Anakin Skywalker, we have at number 5, Anakin Skywalker. Now this is, of course, basically the Star Wars franchise is kind of focused around Anakin. In the original trilogy, we see him as a Sith Lord Darth Vader, and then, and then in the prequels, we get to see him as a Jedi. And so this is, of course, one of the three Jedi on this list that eventually fell to the dark side with Ben Solo and Master Dooku. However, what's cool about Anakin is we did get to see him as a Jedi. We saw three movies focused around him training as a Jedi and you know a Jedi Knight which is very cool and this is definitely a great character I mean he was very powerful and I think he had the potential to be the number one character on this list he could have been the most powerful Jedi ever however when he, and with his duel with Obi-Wan on Mustafar a lot of his limbs were cut off his skin was severely burnt which means he lost all those cells losing all those midichlorians which means his force sensitivity you know, his force sensitivity and his power in the force dramatically decreased. So while he did gain some brute strength from that robotic suit, he actually lost a lot of his force power. So um, his full potential, he definitely never reached his potential. So that's why he's only, um, that's why he's only halfway up this list. So at number 4 is Obi-Wan Kenobi himself, and this is one of the most well-known Jedi Masters out there, and we basically see a full account of this Jedi's life um, throughout the series. In episode 1, we see him as a young Padawan, in episode 2, we see him as a Jedi Master, episode 3, we see him as a Jedi Master on the High Council, episode 4, we see him as an old man training Luke, in episode 5 and 6, we see him as kind of a force ghost guiding Luke, so we basically see see his full life. Um, we only need an, an Obi-Wan Kenobi spin-off film in between episode 3 and 4 where he's on Tatooine and then we'll really have a whole record of his life. And this is just a really great Jedi and he's very powerful. He trained two Skywalkers, Anakin and Luke, influenced them both to become great Jedi. 
Um, he killed both Darth Maul and General Grievous, two very powerful individuals. Um, he he was a Jedi general in the in the Clone Wars. So this is really a great Jedi, and he's definitely a fan favorite. He's my favorite Jedi out there too. Um, he's definitely very cool. He sacrificed himself for Luke in Episode Four. Darth Vader eventually killed him, and this is of course a great Jedi and definitely very powerful as well. At number three is Mace Windu. Now, this was, of course, he was, of course, the master of the of the Jedi High Council, which the only member higher than the master of the um, High Council is the Grand Master of the Jedi High Council. So, this is um, Mace Windu was definitely a very powerful Jedi. He's probably most well known for his purple lightsaber. Um, he mastered his own lightsaber combat skill that he invented himself. Which, um, in this lightsaber combat skill, you can actually use your dark side to your advantage as a weapon of the light side um so he's definitely very powerful in um the force he he actually enjoys battle which is a, a very unique trait for the jedi um very cool very powerful he fought darth sidious and he was actually able to defeat darth sidious before anakin intervened now some people would argue that darth sidious actually purposely lost that battle to appeal to anakin so anakin would turn to the you know anakin would turn to the dark side however um he's still a great jedi um he was also trained by um yoda along with ki adi mundi and master dooku so uh, definitely a very powerful jedi and he's described as probably the best Jedi with co in combat skills, um, with a lightsaber. Probably the most um, powerful and most skilled Jedi with a lightsaber in the days of the Old Republic. And at number two is Grand Master Yoda. Now, this, Yoda was, of course, the Grand Master of the Jedi High Council in the days of the Old Republic. The only Jedi higher than Mace Windu and Ki, you know, of Mace Windu and Ki Adi Mundi. Very powerful Jedi. He trained countless Jedi. He trained Ki Adi Mundi, Master Dooku, um, Master Windu. He trained Luke Skywalker, and he's definitely a very powerful and in influential Jedi. He was one of the only survivors of Order sixty six, along with Obi Wan Kenobi, and he also trained Luke Skywalker along with Obi Wan. He trained Luke Skywalker. Skywalker on Dagobah, and this is definitely a very well-known character. Of course, you know, he's well-known for being the small green Jedi that speaks in the odd way, you know, always phrases his sentences, you know, in the opposite way that humans speak. So this is definitely a very unique character, a very well-known Star Wars character, and he's very powerful. He rarely uses his lightsaber. Um, he's definitely devoted to peace, but when he does, he's definitely very powerful, mostly able to win a duel, um, very powerful in combat we saw in episode 3 he can take out clones very fast um, when Obi-Wan and Yoda went to the Jedi Temple to kill all the clones who had attacked it he was able to take them out very fast so he's definitely a very powerful Jedi and you know one of the most powerful Jedi in the galaxy however there is one more Jedi who is more powerful than Yoda and that is, of course, Grandmaster Luke Skywalker. So Luke Skywalker was, of course, the main character of the original trilogy. We saw him as a young boy in Episode 4, and he then trained in Episode 5 and 6 to become a Jedi. And between Episode 6 and 7, he got even more powerful. He started the new Jedi Order um, and trained Ben Solo, who eventually did turn against him, destroying the Jedi, um, the new Jedi Order. But he's still very powerful, and he... I um, it's assumed that he was the Grand Master of the Jedi, just like Yoda. Um, he was the Grand Master to um, kind of the successor to Yoda. And he's definitely very powerful, and I would rank him above Yoda. Um, I do think he's more powerful than Yoda. I do think he reached his full potential, unlike his father, Anakin, because he was not turned into a cyborg, so he didn't lose any of his force sensitivity. One arm was cut off, that is true, but that's not as much as Anakin. Anakin got four limbs cut off um so you know definitely a very powerful jedi in the eu he was you know very overpowered um and i'm guessing in the new canon he's going to be very overpowered as well which is going to be very cool um we haven't seen much of luke's new power in the new films we definitely will in episode eight and nine so we don't really know much about him but i am assuming that he's more powerful than yoda and definitely a very fun character and very powerful so yeah that was my top 10 most powerful jedi um, hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment if you want. There'll be more content coming up soon, and I will see you all next time.